okay guys so in this video let's add products to our cart so currently we see that we have this add to cart button here but if we click here nothing happens and even if we click here that is going inside the product retail section nothing happens so let's go back to our application here and here let me open the shop row where we want to handle this add to cart button uh, that is this button that is this button i'm talking about that is add to cart so here inside this thing here so let me uh, close this split view here and let me open only the code tab here so here inside the shop row that is the individual grid item uh, we have a data variable here that is product and then we have the variable that is a shop interface and this shop interface has been implemented inside our shop fragment here as we can see that our shop fragment has implemented this shop interface so here we have handled the on click item that is to go to the product detail section so this interface con contains another method and this method is called the add item method so let's let's call this method whenever someone clicks on this button here that is this add to cart button so here let's go to this button here that is says add to cart let me provide an attribute that is the on click attribute on this button so on click so here what we'll do we'll use data binding here and for this we want to call that function that is shop interface dot add item so we can simply say shop interface dot add item and here we need to pass in the product and since we already have our data variable here that is the product so we can directly pass that variable inside this method here that is shop interface dot add item and here we can pass in the product here like this so now some, if someone will click this button here that is this button then this method would be called so let's log it inside the console here so log d and here we can simply say product dot to string like this so let's run this application and let's also open the locket here and here we are inside the shop fragment only because we are only seeing the shop fragment things here so now let me clear out the console or it is already cleared so let's go back to our application so firstly let me click on iMac 21 and now I'll click this iPhone 11 Pro Max like this so let's go back to our application and here we see that we get our log statements from the shop fragment the first click was on iMac 21 as we can see here and the second click was on this iPhone 11 Pro Max so we see that we are getting the products here inside this add item method using data binding from the shop row so now what we want to do we want to initialize our cart repo inside the shop view model so let's open the view model here and our repositories here so currently our cart repo is empty and we are going to fill it right now so firstly let me initialize that cart repo inside our shop view model so currently we only have the shop repo initialized but now let's initialize the cart repo so cart repo uh, cart cart repo equal to new cart repo like this and then we need to import this like this and we also need to make this class public that is this cart repo class because it is from another package so pr not private but it should be public like this and the error is gone inside the view model and now what we want to do we want to do the addition of the items inside this cart repo so how do we handle the uh, this thing here that is the cart repo so firstly what we want inside our cart repo we want to create a list of cart items and we want to have them as mutable live data because we want to op also observe the list of cart items that are inside this cart repo so let me create a variable here that is a mutable live data so private mutable live data and the type of this mutable live data would be a list of cart items so let me provide the list here and the type of this list would be cart items cart item like this and we need to import this class that is the cart item class and again we need to make this class public that is this model here that is the cart item model here so let's make it public like this now the error is gone here and now let's call it mutable cart because we'll be observing this mutable cart to get what's inside the list of items that has been added to this cart here so let's initialize it right away equal to new mutable live data and now 
To get the card, that is what's all inside the card, we'll create a public method that returns live data. So let's create a public method that is public live data. And here it will return us a list of, list of card items. So list card item and let's call it the method name would be get card like this. Now firstly we'll check if the value inside this mutable card is null, then we want to initialize our card. So let's check it. So if mutable card dot get value equal to null, then what we want to do, we want to init card. That is we want to initialize our card and we'll create this method in a moment. That is this init card. And then finally what we'll do, we'll return this mutable card. And now let me create this method here that is init card. So let me copy it and let me create this method here. So let me create a public method here that is public void init card like this. And here what we'll do, we'll simply say mutable card dot set value. And here we'll simply initialize it with a new array list. So new array list like this. So this is all what we need to do to get the card. And now where do we want to observe this get card? So we want to observe this get card in a couple of different locations. But for now, let's uh, simply observe this get card method inside our shop fragment. But how do we connect from shop fragment to this cart repo? That is this method inside the cart repo class that is get card. For that, we'll use the shop view model to access this get card method. So once I'll do, you'll get to know. So now inside our shop view model, what we want to do? We want to create another method here that is public and here this method would return live data. So live data and what it would return, it would return us a list of cart items. So let's create this here that is list cart item like this and we'll call this method get cart like this. It depends on you that what you want to call this method, but I like to keep it the same name. That is the method's name should be same inside your card repo and your shop view model. So I'm calling it get card because it's get card here inside the uh, card repo. So let's go back to our shop view model. And here what we'll do, we'll simply return card repo dot get card like this. So this is how we can observe the card from our any fragments from any of the fragments that we want either from the main activity or any of the fragments. So why not let's go to the main activity itself and we'll observe this uh, card fragment that is get card from here itself. So for that, firstly, we need to create an instance of shop view model. So we can say shop view model, shop view model like this. And we can initialize the shop view model inside the on create method. So we can say shop view model equal to new view model provider view model provider and here we need to pass in the owner and the owner would be this activity and dot get shop view model dot class like this and now what we can do we can simply say shop view model dot get card dot observe because this get card returns as a live data so we can observe it so we can say observe and for the lifecycle owner we can pass in this because the shop view models lifecycle owner is this activity so we are we are passing this here and then we can pass in the observer here so what we can do here we can simply make a log statement of the list of cart items so we can simply say here log d plus cart items dot to string like this and let me quickly create this tag here at the top of this activity so log t that is a tag for this activity. So now this is done and whenever an item has been added to this cart list, so we will be notified inside the uh, inside the log cat that the items has been changed. Or instead of um, me providing here cart items dot to string, we'll simply provide here cart items dot size to get the size of the list that is the cart item list. So we'll know that how many items we have added. So now let's go back to our cart repo and from there we'll see how to add items to the cart. So let's go to a cart repo here and here what we'll do, we'll create another method here that would be a public method and that a method would be called add item to cart. So public 
and I would like to uh, keep the type of this method that is the return type of this method to be boolean so that we can know that if the item has been added to the cart or if it has not, not been added because we know that the maximum quantity that can be added inside our cart for a particular item is 5. So let's make this method boolean so boolean add item to cart and this takes in a product as an argument not process but product like this so now the first thing we'll do here firstly we want to check if the mutable cards value is equal to null and if it is equal to null we'll initialize the card so we'll check if mutable card dot get value equal to null then what we want to do we want to initialize the card so now firstly what we want to do we want to get the current list of this mutable card so we can do that very easily so that is list of card item and that is cart item list equal to new array list like this and here we can simply pass mutable cart dot get value which returns us a, a list of cart items and then what we want to do we want to create a new cart item from this product that is this product so let's say cart item cart item equal to new cart item and here we'll pass in the product and the quantity and the quantity is the default one here because our cart items constructor takes in two values that is the product and the quantity so therefore we are providing here the product and the quantity and now what we will do we will simply say cart item list dot add and here we want to simply add this cart item and then finally we will need to set the value of this mutable cart so we can say mutable cart dot set value and here we can pass in this cart item list like this and now finally what we want to do we want to return true here that the item has been added because this method that is add item to cart expects a return type for boolean so we are returning true here and for now we have not uh, made any check whether the quantity of the product is greater than 5 or it is less than 5 so that we would do later but for now we are simply adding the items to our cart as the user clicks on the add to cart button so now we want to call this method that is add item to cart. So what do we do? We need to create another method inside the shop view model that would call that method. So here we can say public method and this would again return a boolean from the calling activity or the fragment add product to cart like this and here we can pass in the product here like this and then what we want to return here we can simply return cart repo dot add pro item to cart so here we can pass in the product here like this and here i have called it add product to cart and here i have called add item to cart so let me change this uh, method name here that is let me also call it add item to cart because it makes more sense so now whenever you want to add any item to our cart we can simply use the shop view model and this method that is add item to cart and the item would be added to the cart so let's call this method from our shop fragment that is from this method that is add item so here what we'll do we'll simply say shop view model dot add item to cart and here we can simply pass in the product here like this and here we can keep this thing here that is is added equal to shop view model dot add item to cart and here we can simply make a log statement here that is whether the item is added or not so we can simply log d here that is is added or let's say product dot get name is added so let's run this application and hopefully we'll be adding our products to our cart so let's go back to our application here and let me also open the log cat here and let me remove the shop fragment from here because we are observing the cart from the main activity and we would be getting this uh, log statement also so currently if we see here that uh, let me copy this thing from here and let me paste it here okay so we see that once the application is started this method was called that is on changed and here we see that on changed has zero items that is no item has been added to the cart so let me remove this statement from here and now let's go back to our application and now let's add this item imac21 ipad air 
this thing this thing to our card so now let's go back to our activity or to our application and this time we see that we get a number of log statements here and the first statement we see is that from the main activity that is on changed this method is called again because the item has been added to the cart list and we see that we are getting the cart item size that is one and then these two log statements are from the shop fragment that is this fragment here that is this thing here we are getting this statement that is add item product dot get name and is added so we see that imac has been added and then again iPad, iPad Air has been added and we need to put a space here but it doesn't matter we can see that iPad Air has also been added and again inside the main activity on change is called uh, that is this thing here and the number of items inside our cart is 2 and so on and so forth so for the th third also for the fourth also so now let's go back and let's add one more item so let me add this thing here and let's go back here so we see that this time we get this thing here that is on changed 5 and macbook pro 16 inch true that is this item is also added so now let's also call this method that is this add item to cart from the product detail page that is we want to call this method also from this button here that is from the product detail page so let's go back to our application so let's go to, so let's go to the layout file for the product detail section that is this section but here we see that we only have the shop view model we do not have that interface here so and again it is very simple to do so so let's go to this button here and here what we'll do we'll create an on click attribute here so on click and here what you want to do if we can simply say shop view model dot add item to cart and now you might be wondering that how to get the product so it is very simple to get as we got the product here to display so here we can simply say shop view model dot product like this because this is the product that has been set inside the shop view model while you are inside this fragment that is the product detail fragment so now let's run this application and let's see that if it is working fine that if we are getting the log statements and for that what i'm going to do i'm going to remove a couple of statements from here that are unnecessary so let me remove this log statement from here that simply displays the product to string so now let me also remove this statement from here and now let's run our application i've simply removed these two statements because we do not want to see any of the log statements while the person clicks on the item or on the add item to see the product details that is the product to uh, product to string method so let me open the lock at here and currently we see that the main activities on change method is called that is this method that is while observing the cart and the size of the items is zero that is the cart list size so now let me clear the lock at here and let's go back to our application so let's add the item here let's go back we see on change is called and there are one items and we see imac 21 has been added so now let's go to the product detail section that is ipad air 2 so let's click on add to cart so let's click here and here we see that the main activity is on change is called again and we see that two products have been added and we did not see this add item call here because from the product detail section we are directly calling this method that is add item to cart inside the shop view model we are not calling this method that is this method instead we are directly calling the shop view models add item to cart method from our product detail fragment that is from this button click here as we can see here let me close this split view here so this is how we add products to our cart so in the next video let's make this recycler view for the cart that is to display items which are present inside the cart here so that's what we are going to do in the next video